Good afternoon, Deerfield. How's everybody doing today? Looks like we are in for some interesting weather. Um, I am myself from South Louisiana where the gigantic hurricane just went through and did a lot of damage down there and now it looks like it's followed me here. So I apologize that I brought the hurricane here. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to give out a shout out to all of my peeps down there because we've got a long road to recovery. Not that any of anybody um, from there is watching this, but you know, just putting it out there, um, sending my good vibes out. So um, hopefully you will join me in doing the same. Um, and hopefully everybody is safe today um, and that the weather isn't too bad here. Um, I'm also looking forward to a vacation coming up. So very happy about that. So we'll be taking a little break. We'll be on hiatus. For, from this show for the next few weeks. Um, I'll be out the next two weeks and then the next week will be resident council. So I'll be back on the 29th, I think, of September. That Whatever that last Wednesday is, I'll be back. So I'm looking forward to a little break and um, then starting out fresh and uh, with a lot of good information for y'all. Okay, so let's dive in. Today, you know, I've been getting a lot of calls um, recently from residents here at Cedarfield about questions about sugar and carbohydrates and making healthy choices as far as you know how much sugar and how many, car many carbs should I be eating and people being concerned about diabetes. Um, so I pulled this old topic out. I have actually done this one before but it just seemed relevant. Um, so maybe some of the people that have called me ha are watching today and if not you know, this is some new information for those of you who are. Um, anyway, it never hurts to kind of review some of this and maybe we can even expand upon it in future shows based on, you know, feedback I get or anything like that. So let's dive into the topic of sugar. We're going to keep it kind of generic. I'm not going to speak too specifically to diabetes and blood sugar management. We're just going to talk about sugar. Sugar, um, there is a lot of there's a lot of information out there about sugar. Um, a lot of it is maybe kind of half true or not true at all, a lot of misinformation. So I just wanted to kind of review a little bit about, you know, what sugar is even. I mean, we all know what sugar is, but let's, we're gonna dive into some of the science and kind of hash out some of the things about sugar, good and bad, and hopefully answer some of your questions about how it affects you and your diet. All right. So um, there was a friend of mine who um, said something about like she was enjoying the snack or whatever and she's like, oh, it, it doesn't even have, um, I forget what she said. She said something about like, oh, it's full of coconut sugar, you know, the healthy sugar. And I just kind of, in my mind, I kind of smiled, but in my mind I was rolling my eyes because, <laughs> um, you know, there's not really, um, uh, any sugar that's healthier than the other and we're going to go into that and explain why that's the case. Um, there's lots of different names for sugar and types of sugar but at the end of the day it's all sugar so we're going to discuss that. So if you have been watching the show um, you are probably familiar with the concept of macronutrients. So these are the types of foods that provide calories. So there's carbohydrates, proteins and fats. So carbohydrates are, um, is kind of a big term for what we know as glucose or um, sugar. It's all kind of, these terms aren't exactly the same, but they're very interchangeable. So um, carbohydrates um, can be broken into two types, simple and complex. So we're gonna focus on simple carbohydrates, which is basically sugar. Um, so sugar is composed of a bunch of little molecules, the main one being glucose, which is a term you're probably familiar with. So there are other molecules too that could also kind of hook up with the glucose to form different things, different types of carbohydrates, but we're gonna focus on just regular simple sugar. So um, this is there are these little, they're called monosaccharides. Glucose is a monosaccharide, to throw out a science word for you. And so these 
they're just kind of like one little molecule and they hook up with another molecule to form a disaccharide, di meaning two, right? Um, and so that is why it's called a simple sugar because there's just the two molecules that are linked together. So a complex, so these are things that we normally think of when we think of sugar, like regular sugar and sodas and candy and um, honey and syrup, things like that. Those what we call concentrated sweets, things that you would normally think of when you think of sweets um, and sugar. Well, there's also complex carbohydrates. These are complex because they are these long chains of these glucose molecules. There could be anywhere from three to thousands. Um, and they branch off and they make these really complex kind of um, you know, designs and things. And that, um, so those make up our, what we call like our starchy foods. So things like breads and pastas and rice and even um, like potatoes and sweet potatoes and uh, lima beans, things like that. All those starchy foods. So that is also a carbohydrate, but those are the complex car carbohydrates. So we're going to focus on the simple ones, the simple carbohydrates, which is closer to what we know of as sugar, which are just the smaller molecules, usually just two put together. Okay, so when we eat the sugar, it goes into our body, and then our, and then our um, body sends a signal to our pancreas to create insulin. And then that insulin and the sugar, kind of the glucose, they hook up and insulin helps that glucose get on its way into our body. Um, if we don't have that insulin, it just kind of hangs out in our bloodstream. And that's why people with diabetes are checking their blood sugar to make sure you know, that they have the right amount of glucose in their bloodstream. We, um, we want kind of to find a, a good balance. We also wanna make sure that that glucose is getting into, to getting out of our bloodstream and into our body, into all the cells and our brain and our organs and all the places that it needs to be to do its work. So if you remember, we've talked about carbohydrates, especially glucose, as being fuel for our body. So these, this glucose is kind of like when we put gas into our cars. This is what our body was created um, to use glucose as fuel. Now, it can create alternative sources of fuel when we don't have enough glucose, um, but this is what our body prefers. It prefers this glucose, which we get from sugar and carbohydrates, um, especially our brains. Um, that is, you know, again, the preferred source of fuel, and that's why, well, when we are not getting enough glucose, that's when our body switches over to burning protein and fat. It'll burn fat first and then it switches over to protein to create energy for our body. So that's why some of these low carb diets are so popular. Because in theory, if you cut out carbs, you're forcing your body to burn fat for fuel. And while that sounds ideal, if you have an excessive amount of fat, it's, you know, it's not. We really kind of want to keep an even keel of all the different nutrients. Um, so especially as we get older, we definitely don't want to get to the point where our body's burning protein for fuel. Um, you know, as we get older, we might start losing weight. You might find that you're kind of thinning out. Your skin's a little thinner. Um, you know, maybe you're, you know, a little more stick-like than round, like you may have used to have been. That's because you, you're probably starting to burn a lot of your fat, especially your subcutaneous fat and things like that. And then when that happens, then your body might start burning protein, which as an older adult, that protein is so precious and so vital um, to maintain your muscle mass, to support your immune system, your skin, all of these things. We've discussed that on the show before. So we really wanna make sure we're getting enough carbohydrates so that our body doesn't have to worry about burning through fat, burning through protein. We, we need all of those things. They exist for a reason. We just don't need excess amounts of them. Okay, so that is why glucose, which comes from sugar, is so important and why it's not a bad thing. It has a bad reputation, but we really do need it. So the problem is um, when we have, an, like I said, when we have an excess amount of sugar, and in our Western American diet, it is not difficult to get an excess amount of sugar. There is sugar in everything, things you wouldn't even think that have sugar in them 
have sugar in them. So I'm thinking of things like a loaf of bread. If you flip that um, nutrition label over and read it, you will see added sugar in there, or even like tomato sauce. You know, I know sometimes these things, sugar is used for like some kind of flavoring or whatever, but I don't know. It's just kind of, it's amazing when you really start to look at the ingredients and in foods, you'll see sugar in all kinds of things. So it's really easy to get that excess amount. And then what happens when we have too much sugar, we've talked about what happens when we don't get enough. When you have too much, that sugar just gets stored as triglycerides. It gets turned to fat, which a triglyceride is a type of fat. So it just gets converted into fat and then it just gets stored. And that's the stored fat that we start to accumulate when we're gaining weight. Um, and it doesn't, it can be burned for fuel, but beyond that, it's not really doing us a lot of good. There are some, some vitamins and minerals that are stored in triglycerides, but, um, and some of like the fat soluble vitamins, but for the most part, you know, it's just kind of sitting there wreaking havoc sometimes on our bodies. Okay, so, um, Let's see, where am I? So um, when that sugar enters our body, like I said, it gets broken down. And that's why simple sugars, again, they're just those two molecules and they're joined together. That's why we get that, what we think of like a sugar spike from these simple carbohydrates, because they're really easy to digest. They're just two molecules and we just need to break them apart. It's a very simple process that happens in our body. That's why those simple sugars hit our bloodstream really quickly um, and cause what we know as like a sugar spike. We feel those effects pretty quickly. That's why athletes, you know, take a shot of, um, you know, like honey or something really sweet when they're running if they just need a quick jolt of energy. And that's why they're eating like jelly beans or something like that because it gives them that quick little um, hit of energy that they need. Um, so those complex carbohydrates that are these huge chains of molecules, they take a lot longer to break up apart, break apart and digest. Um, so that's why it's important to have a balance of the two because those complex carbohydrates, especially the whole grains, things with a lot of fiber, they really slow down that, um, that spike of sugar to our blood system, our bloodstream. So um, it's good to find a balance between the two. All right, so sugar gets a bad reputation out there. Um, you know, obviously sugar tastes good and a lot of us have sweet tooths. So from just like a, you know, a pleasure standpoint, it's great. But from a health perspective, there's been a lot of push to, to really um, put sugar down as the enemy. And there's a lot of reasons um, people blame sugar on cause, for causing diabetes, for causing kids to be hyperactive for you know, all of the weight gain, et cetera. So because of all of this information out there that some of it is true, some of it is not, people are looking for alternatives to sugar. Um, and so these kind of healthy foods, um, healthy food brands and um, you know, whatever, there's a lot of marketing um, to um, put out alternatives to sugar. Um, so if you were to go down like the health aisle in the grocery store, maybe you're at Whole Foods where they have a lot of seemingly healthy brands, you're gonna start to see things like, uh, like let me think of some examples here. We have like brown rice syrup and cane syrup, coconut sugar, molasses, agave nectar, honey, all of these things um, they're kind of putting in our, putting out in the front of the labels as, you know, no added sugar, whatever, but then they have all these other things on there. If you look at the ingredients, they have these things like I've just listed out. Well, all of these things are sugar. <laughs> so it's a little trick that they're playing on you to, you know, if you're looking at the ingredients and you don't see sugar, you think, oh, this doesn't have sugar in it. It's healthy for me. But if it has something like honey or agave nectar, that is essentially the same thing as sugar. So those things are all created or made up of those same molecules that regular old sugar in a bag in a sack is made up of. And so when you eat them, they're processed in our bodies exactly the same way um, and they hit our bloodstream the same way and they affect our insulin production the same way. So there's really no difference 
Um, and not to say that that's good or bad, it's just important to know that you know, while you think, oh, this doesn't have sugar in it or I'm not eating sugar with this, it's important to know that you know, those, those other foods that are listed, those are actually sugar in the, in the same sense. So again, let's go over some of these um, alternatives to sugar, even though, you know, in the grand scheme of things, the way they get processed in our bodies, it is made up of the same things that sugar is made up of. So these are anything, any of the syrups. So um, cane syrup, brown rice syrup, maple syrup, corn syrup, and molasses. And then also you might see things like um, sugars derived from um, fruits like or vegetables like beet sugar, coconut sugar, date sugar, grape sugar, um, and then also things like honey, agave nectar, and caramel. All of these things essentially are the same thing as sugar. So be mindful of that um, when you are looking at your ingredients. All right, um, and so in that sense, that's what I was saying earlier. There's really no um, healthier type of sugar. It's all the same when it enters our bodies. Um, the, the main difference is just um, the taste or the texture or how these different ingredients affect the product you're baking, if you're using it like in a baked product or how, you know, how it dissolves in a certain mixture or whatever. Um, so there might be some properties like that, that you, know, you might prefer kind of the smooth texture of honey in your tea to like sugar granules or something like that. Or I personally think that that raw sugar tastes a little bit better. You kind of get that caramel flavor um, than just plain white refined sugar. Um, some people might like the taste of maybe agave nectar versus maple syrup. You know, there's preferences, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, from a nutrition perspective, it's all the same. Um, all right, so is sugar bad for us? or not like what are what's what are the pros and cons of sugar so again we talked about how sugar is um, a carbohydrate it breaks down into glucose and glucose is our body's preferred source of fuel so in that regard sugar is very good for us <laughs> now the 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 way we get into trouble is when we consume too much sugar so there is kind of a limited amount of carbohydrates that our body needs. We only need so much fuel, right? When you're filling up your gas tank, you only need so many gallons and then your tank is full and you're good. So it's kind of the same with carbohydrates. There is, you know, based on your height and your weight and your activity levels, et cetera, there is a certain amount of carbohydrates that you need um, and sugar should be included in that amount. And that is something that I can help you figure out if you're, concerned about your own personal nutrition. It's very individualized. Um, so when we um, consume this excess sugar, like I said, it gets converted into triglycerides or fat and it's stored and that can lead to weight gain. Um, and then that weight gain can start to increase your risk of um, heart disease and um, problems with your joints, it can really limit your mobility, you know, all the things that can have a, um, you know, an effect on your respiratory system and how well you can breathe. It can have a whole host of, you know, effects when you start to gain some weight. Um, also, another myth is that, so sugar is very closely linked to diabetes. Um, and again, I kind of mentioned, you know, that was one of the catalysts for me coming up with this topic. So something important to know is that sugar does not cause diabetes. Um, if you are someone that just eats sugar all the time, that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get diabetes. So there's two types, there's type one diabetes. That has nothing to do with how much sugar you eat. That is strictly your body kind of turning on you. <laughs> it's an autoimmune um, disease. Um, so that really is not affected by nutrition or anything, that's just something that's triggered in your body and then um, and then it's you know becomes a part of your life type 2 diabetes is one that is more closely related with your lifestyle choices and it can be caused by a whole host of things it's not necessarily one versus the other it's usually kind of a combination of um, maybe excessive weight gain um, lack of exercise heart disease, high cholesterol, high blood pressure. There's a lot of these different things 
And it could also just be caused by genetics and family history. So there are a lot of factors that tie into type 2 diabetes, and that's the one that's becoming more and more prevalent in our society, um, especially kind of this, you know, you get this uh, notion of pre-diabetes, which then could lead to diabetes if it's not controlled. But the good news is that with some lifestyle changes and focus on good nutrition and exercise, you can actually reverse some of the effects of that. You could even, you know, downgrade from diabetes down to pre-diabetes and maybe even go back to normal gl blood glucose levels. All right, so then the other one that I wanted to discuss was sugar and cancer. So there's a lot of information out there that says sugar causes cancer, excessive sugar causes cancer, and that sugar feeds cancer cells. Well, I'm here to tell you that there is not enough evidence out there to prove that definitively. Sugar, of course, feeds cancer cells just like it feeds all of your cells in your body. Again, like I said, um, glucose is that source of fuel. And so just like it's a source of fuel for the cells in your liver and your heart and your skin and your eyes, it's a source of fuel for cancer cells as well. So, um, so that's kind of a, you know, you know, maybe a half truth in that regard. Um, but more so than just sugar, it's kind of the effects of the excess of sugar and um, fatty foods and all those things that cause weight gain and this unhealthy lifestyle, which can then increase your risk for things like cancer and your ability to fight other diseases. It can also compromise your immune system, things like that. So you know, to say that sugar causes cancer or that it's feeding cancer cells, you know, maybe if you kind of twist the logic, you can claim it to be true, but it's kind of a far-fetched theory. Um, and there is a lot of research that has gone into this theory that, you know, like I said, just hasn't produced that definitive evidence to say for sure that that's the case. Um, anyway, so, I don't want sugar to feel like the enemy to you. Again, we need it for our bodies to function properly, um, but it's just important to know all of those hidden places that sugar can be found. It's important to know some of these alternative names for sugar so that you can be mindful of what you're eating and whether or not you're getting you know, too much sugar or too little sugar. It's important to keep that in mind. Um, so, Alternative sweeteners, true alternative sweeteners, these not, we call them non-nutritive sweeteners or non, um, like true artificial sweeteners that do not um, have sugar in them, that don't have any calories either. So these are things like, um, I call them the pink, blue, and the yellow. So, you know, sweet and low, equal, um, and Splenda is the yellow one. Um, so these are good alternatives for someone if you have diabetes and you're truly trying to manage your blood sugar and control it, alternative sweet or artificial sweeteners are a good alternative. If you're trying to just minimize your calorie intake, it's a good alternative. Um, I know there's, you know there's a lot of information out there too that they're not good for us and they cause all these problems, whatever. Again, the research has shown that they are generally safe for us to consume um, in you know, normal quantities. So um, that's kind of the gist of that. <laughs> I won't go into all of the studies and stuff, but yes, they are, you know, for people who, who truly need to utilize these artificial sweeteners, they are a good alternative. Um, so if you are concerned that maybe you're having, you're getting too much sugar, um, or you're a little worried about you know, how much sugar is out there, I would say focus on getting the sugar that you need from natural sources such as fruit. Um, we all know that fruit is sweet and it does have sugar in it, just like um, some of these foods we were talking about earlier, like honey and agave nectar and brown rice syrup. Again, the sugar in fruit breaks down just the same as all of those foods or sweeteners, but at least it's natural and it's in combination with all of the other good things you get from fruit like fiber and water and vitamins and minerals etc so um, this is a good source of natural sugar and you could even um, use the juice or the pulp from some of your favorite uh, fruits to sweeten your foods rather than you know adding on just regular table sugar 
Um, so always be mindful too, if you're someone that likes to look at nutrition labels, you always wanna focus on, they've now started to break out you know, from total carbohydrates, they'll put added sugar in there. So you always wanna to try to avoid those foods that have the added sugar, because um, that's just excess. Um, and you wanna to try to find um, maybe versions of food that probably don't necessarily need to have sugar. Things like um, cereals and bread, um, that, like pasta sauces, like I was saying. Try to find the ones that don't have that added sugar. And then if you need to, put a little, like, you know, in your cereal. Like, I love grape nuts, for instance, and they don't have any added sugar in them, and but they're not sweet at all. So, you know, it's better to maybe buy something that's unsweetened, and then you can sweeten it um, according to your preference, as opposed to, you know, buying something from the store that's just way too sweet and unnecessarily sweet. So just some things to think about um, when you are out shopping, if you're off doing that yourself. Alrighty, so again, if you have any questions about your diet and what you're consuming and whether you are concerned that you're getting too much or too little sugar, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to kind of review that for you. Um, I've had several residents who have done that recently and I'm always happy to help them out. Um, all right, so again, we will be off for several weeks. So you get a break from me, I get a break from the show, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to coming back um, on I think it's the 29th and joining us again and you know revisiting our show and looking forward to your feedback and your comments and questions if you have any always happy to hear them so I hope you all have a great September um, hope we all survived the weather today <laughs> and I will see you in a few weeks <laughs>